for something bigger than us. So you're here and you're training today and you think that what you're training for is your new business, your side hustle, your promotion, but you're training for so much more that you don't even know what it is. And my challenge to you today is to realize that everything that you're doing, every step you've taken, every position that you've taken in your life is guiding you and training you for something bigger. So let me tell you about the vacation. It was winter break. My husband and I wanted to take a spontaneous vacation. Because as you know, when you have three small children, nine, seven, and four, there ain't a whole lot of spontaneity going on in anything, right? So we wanted a spontaneous vacation, not too rigid, not too planned. We're going to take a road trip, we're going to go with the boys, and we're going to go somewhere cold. We wanted it to be cold. So we chose Asheville, and we chose that strategically because my nine-year-old had a broken leg, and he was wearing a boot. So we couldn't go skiing, we couldn't go snow, snow tubing. We had to just kind of do something where we could enjoy the cold, but not really anything too intense. The cabin. But before we get to the cabin, we're going to go to Chimney Rock. Has anybody here been to Chimney Rock? Yes? You know, my kids and my husband surprised me today, and they're sitting right there. <laughs> so we get to Chimney Rock, and we chose Chimney Rock with a very specific reason. Chimney Rock has an elevator that takes you all the way to the top of the mountain. And since my son has a broken leg and his, his boot, we could take the elevator and at least go to the top of the mountain and, and take a view. But when we get to Chimney Rock, the, the elevator is broken. And my husband walks up to a staff member and says, hey, is there anything else we could do, any trails we could take? And, and the, the staff member says, well, you know, there's a little trail to a waterfall. And it's 0.7 miles that way and 0.7 miles back. You can do that one. It's really easy. And of course, she would think that because she wasn't with my nine-year-old, seven-year-old, and four-year-old. So two minutes into the trail, my kids are melting, totally deteriorating. They want to get to the cabin. They want to play on Nick's Nintendo Switch. Orly says his, his foot hurts. Justin and, and Ryan are complaining. Who's going to go on daddy's shoulders? It was miserable. And I turn around and I said to my husband, let's just go home. Like, this, is, this doesn't have to be this hard. Let's go back to the cabin. And he says, he gets all motivational speaker on me. No, these are life lessons. These boys cannot quit. They have to learn. The Rodriguez brothers are not quitters. The man starts to quote Shakespeare. The St. Crispin speech. We band of brothers. And I'm looking at him and I'm thinking, what's going on with him? He doesn't even like to hike when we're home. Why is he feeling so adventurous? But he is insisting. There was something in him. There was something in his gut that was telling him that we had to finish that trail. So he kept telling my, my, my sons, you got to get the, to the waterfall. You got to get to the waterfall. When you get to that waterfall, you're going to smell victory. And you're going to know that you can do it. And one day, daddy and mommy aren't going to be here with you anymore. And you need to know that when things get hard, you've got to finish. You can do this. It took us 45 minutes to walk 0.7 miles. <laughs> 45 minutes. But... We made it to the waterfall. Can I get a round of applause for my kids who made it to the waterfall? So then, once we're at the waterfall, we're like, the energy's up. Now we're really excited. And my husband says, okay, he had a very clever idea. Now, for the one, whoever one of you three does not whine, complain, or ask to go on my shoulders on the way back, you're going to get a Gatorade. Took us 10 minutes to get back. <laughs> 45 minutes to and 10 minutes back, just for Gatorade. And then we went up to the cabin, and we slept over, 
and we had a wonderful time, and that was it. And it was a cute story, right? But that was it. You see, the thing is that sometimes lessons come to you 20 years from now, and then other times lessons come to you the next day. So the next day, we wake up in this cabin. We've had a great time. The cabin was everything we thought it was going to be. It was incredible. Three floors, hot tub, fire pit, everything. And Chris says, you know, we've had such a great time. Why don't you guys just stay? Stay for New Year's. We still had our stuff in our hotel. We didn't even check out because we were only going to go spend the night. My husband's like, what do you say? Let's stay for New Year's Eve. And at this point, we're just all having so much fun. We're like, yeah, of course. So we decide that we're going to go back to the hotel, check out, because on the next day we were leaving back to Miami, or we thought of Georgia at the time, but the plans changed. And then we'll get our stuff and we'll come back. We'll do a little sightseeing in Asheville, and we'll go back to Black Mountain. When we get to the hotel, we pack up. We get in our car, and I say, okay, Orlando, I put the GPS for the hotel I wanted to tour, and things are not looking normal. It's very, the, the, the weather has changed. It started snowing a little bit, and things are just not looking normal. And we start seeing that there's cars sliding on the road, and there's green lights, and cars are not moving. And I'm starting to get a little nervous. And I say, you know, what do you think, Orlando? says, I don't think we should stop at the hotel. We need to get to that cabin. By now, we've already checked out of the hotel. So we get in the car. I mean, we're in the car. We're driving. I change the GPS, and I put the GPS for the cabin. My husband calls my friend Chris and says, hey, it doesn't look like the weather's looking too good, so we're going to go straight to the cabin because we want to get there before nightfall. At this point, it was 3.30 in the afternoon. Our friend says, we heard the weather is declining. We're right behind you. Go ahead. We'll meet you there. So we start our drive. I immediately start Googling tips for driving on icy roads because things are looking different. The energy has changed. And it says, turn the, the wheel in the direction of the tires. If you slide, it gives me some other tips. I'm reading them out loud to my husband. My husband says, listen, I'm going to go really slow, 10 miles an hour. We'll get there when we get there. And if by the time we get to the mountain, we see that this is just dangerous, forget it. We'll find a hotel somewhere else, and we'll figure out what we're going to do on New Year's Eve. We'll, we'll figure it out. So we start driving, and we're fine. We've, we're doing good. And it's taking hours, but we're doing good. And then all of a sudden, we're at the, at the mountain. We have been going up this mountain for about an hour. And it's zig, zigzag, zigzag, up, down, up, down. And the GPS says that I have a thousand feet to my next left turn. That's it, just a thousand feet. So I said, Orlando, we are almost there. We make a left, we have a one more mile, and we are golden. Except that all of a sudden, my car, the car wasn't responding. And we have a little nickname for our car, it's called Ojak. And I hear that my husband is having a full-blown conversation with the vehicle. And he's like, oh, Jack, come on, oh, Jack, oh, Jack, oh, come on, buddy, oh, Jack. And I'm, I'm going, what's going on? He goes, God, oh, the car's not moving. And we're trying to go up the mountain, and it's like, ur, ur, ur. and I look at the dashboard, and there's triangles, which are never a good sign. And I said, oh, my God. So I start getting really nervous. I'm like, oh, we're just going to have to stop or something. But some, somehow the car just chugs up just just enough, up, 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 just a little bit enough. And then the next thing was a little bit of a decline. And I said, just, it's just a thousand feet. That's it. That's all it is. It's a thousand feet. Except that at the decline, my husband just lost control of the car. That was it. We're on a cliff. And all I see is the car sliding. I say, Orlando, turn the, turn the wheel in the direction of the tires. I see him turn the car. The car continues to slide. I'm on the passenger side. I'm putting my foot as if I were, had a brake, and I'm bracing myself, and I hear my husband exclaim, oh my God, please God, don't let my family fall off this cliff. And I look and I see a cliff going down. And all of a sudden, by the grace of God, there was a strip of grass 
And I guess he was pumping the tires and the tire caught onto the grass and the car just stopped. It just stopped. And we just sat there, not really knowing what had just happened, but we didn't fall off. So at that point, the GPS still says a thousand feet. My husband immediately goes into action mode, right? And don't we all do that in life? Sometimes things derail us. We feel like we're about to fall off the cliff. We need to get in action mode. What are we going to do to solve the problem now?